I'm just going to touch on a couple points and then we'll, we'll have questions. I think they'll be really rich. Just to add a little bit to what she said, um, Representative Slaughter has not, uh, has not spoken out. So while we have seven representatives across the state, all of them Republican except for Mafei, who wrote letters and took action to stop the government from doing its job, um, none of our representatives have done something similar in favor of OSHA doing its job. And so what we need right now is for the representatives who have farms in their district and have the constituents in their district um, to really take that same stand. So if we can all let Louise Slaughter know we like that leadership. I'm sure she's very busy um, and maybe doesn't need to necessarily champion it, but could sign a letter. Um, so just, I'm just gonna, let's see, um, touch on just a, a couple points, and they're a little bit scattered. The small farm piece is really um, problematic and underlying a lot of the problems here. We had a statistic that around 75% of the dairy farms in New York State have 100 cows or less, which means maybe they have one or two workers who are um, Latino. Because they like to say that no matter how small the farm is, there's always a Latino worker working there, whether they're living in that barn or in the owner's house. There's very few farms left where it's literally just the family. And so when the Farm Bureau uses that term over and over again, it's like an ingraining, a meshing of our um, consciousness about this idea of a small family farm, and it's really a marketing strategy. So if there's one worker, then it's a workplace. It's not a family farm, it's a workplace. And they should, of all the rights, of all the human rights that exist, the right to stay alive when you go to work should be there. And so it's un believable that this writer every year Congress on in the Appropriations Act passes that year after year you exempt that small family that small farm which 10 workers is a big farm right that's pretty large and so you know the idea like Kevin said I'm not gonna die for 725 an hour you're signing up to go to a place of work that first of all is in an industry that's extremely dangerous it's not like we're in Chris Adams of OSHA the other night was like, it's not like it's an office building where there's no precedent for having OSHA to come in. We're talking about dangerous, it's a very dangerous industry. So there's no reason why it should be exempted. Besides health and safety exemptions, there's a lot of other exemptions in agriculture, and I think we have a crowd who knows about those. We're fighting year after year to get those um, those exclusions written out of the law. So, but in the 30s, they passed the, the Fair Labor Standards Act, and in every right that they passed, they said, but except in farm work, except in farm work, except farm workers, except farm workers. And so, when they have to work 72 hours a week, and they're supporting a family here and there, because they are an entity here, so they're having to support two households. That's why it doesn't work, and that's why they have to work 72 hours. So, when we hear farmers say, Oh, they want to work that many hours, and if we pass an overtime bill, you're messing it up because then they can't. We won't be able to afford to give them the hours they want. So you're fighting against their interests. We're not fighting against their interests. Let's look at a bigger picture. If we were a living wage, and if they lived with their families, if we had a system that worked, not on their backs, dysfunctional, put all the problems on their backs. If we had a system that worked, where they were supporting one family, either be it in El Salvador where we fix free trade problems or be it in the United States where we fix immigration problems, um, then then we would have, they wouldn't have to work so many hours. <laughs> Get all of um, So moving on to immigration, I also don't like getting caught up in the minutia of immigration reform. Some people think immigration reform passes, all of this goes away. That's not true. Rebecca said it best, a worker is a worker is a worker. It should, we shouldn't have to wait until immigration reform passes to get justice in the workplace. So, yes, we believe immigration reform will help some of this, but it won't be the end all solution. Um, we're fighting hard to raise awareness of the proposed guest worker programs and the danger of creating a society of second-class citizens without access to voting who are separated from their families. The proposed legislation will separate them for three to six years from their families. 
and that is just not the society we want. We want a nation of immigrants and families. We don't want a nation of hands and workers. But that's what that Senate bill that we're all holding up would, was proposing to increase. And they're proposing to increase having guest workers in dairies right now. Guest workers are not in the dairies. It's detailed, I won't get into it. Um, the subs, I guess I just, you know, the, the reaction of the farmers and the, and, the, and the support that they've gotten from all those different associations we talked about, um, it's just such a contrast to how much, like, they're so angry that a government agency will come onto their farm um, and give a $2,000 fine. Each tank of milk is $20,000 they sell if, the, if it's a bad quality milk. If it's good quality, 26,000 for each tank, and the tanks are just leaving that farm three a day. So $2,000 slap on the wrist, you know, like from OSHA, you know, as compared to the subsidies they're getting, and we hear of all these programs. Representative Gillibrand is promoting the Greek yogurt and school lunches across the nation. Um, these pr programs to convert the manure into energy. So there's, and then the lessening of the Clean Water Act, so that the threshold is 300 cows, not 200 cows. We just read that um, the earnings in dairy last year were 18 percent higher than the year before. So these dairies aren't going anywhere. There's processing plants opening up everywhere, Batavia, Auburn, Portland. There's massive vision for expanding dairy, and there's going to be a huge demand for that milk. So the dairies aren't going anywhere, and if we're going to celebrate this Greek yogurt industry and celebrate dairies as our future in New York, we want to do it in a way that's safe for the environment, certainly for workers. Um, so um, I think that's, I mean, I, I just, I want to just go back to that. Jose is here, he's separated from his family. He's, we've been tra traveling and staying together for the last week, and I just, I feel it every, I feel it so much being with him. And it's my, it's the, it's one of the hardest things of doing this work is to be witness to how horrible it is that people have to live apart from their families. Um, it just tears at every piece of what it is, especially Latin Americans who are so close with families. And I'm feeling it more acutely than ever and have been able to spend so much time with Jose. And I just think we're, um, you know, to connect it to the food we eat and that this inhumane way of having people be separate from their kids, from his three kids, his young daughter, and his older sons, and his wife, it's just really hard, so I hope we all will keep that in mind and just, you know, I know you all are on board, that's why you're here, but it's just to share it with you is actually really helpful for all of us. Thank you for listening.